Welcome to this care collab. Thank you so much for being here, for coming over to see my video. If you have come from another channel, channels that I have also linked in the description, I appreciate your time. Thank you so very, very much. This is a care collab on Renanthera Mona Chica. In my case, it is an update. And usually when we do care collabs, updates, and there is an orchid that is not in bloom, it would mean that somewhere in the list of channels participating, we do have orchids or an orchid in bloom. So I do encourage you to go check out the description, look at the links of other channels participating, and go find yourself those Renanthera monochicas that are in bloom. Now, you would think that me being down here in southern Spain gives me an advantage when it comes to my climate being sunny and warm and my orchids performing a little bit differently as opposed to other climates and other environments. Well, let me tell you something. These care collabs are super interesting because regardless of the fact that we're growing the same orchid, Clearly you can see that my environment is super different in comparison to others. And being in southern Spain does have its advantages with the fact of light. I have a lot of sun during the winter even though my temperatures are not always conducive to what the orchid would prefer. Just so happens today I have a very beautiful sunny day and this is where the orchid lives during the winter exposed to full sun when there is sun and in an area where there is a pocket of warmth because my temperature might right now be 18 degrees Celsius but the little pocket of warmth that she finds herself in has about 23 24 degrees Celsius. Still, her leaves won't burn because the breeze is very, very chilly in comparison to where the orchid is. For that reason, the leaves won't heat up, but they still get the light and the sun that they need. I would not dare do this in the summer. So speaking of light, you can see that a considerable amount of anthocyanin is on the top half of the crown, and the older leaves are looking a little bit more green. Well, three weeks ago, they were all that burgundy anthocyanin color. But for the past two weeks, we have had some appalling cold weather. I couldn't even find pockets of warmth on my patio, meaning that this orchid has been inside most of the time, biding her time on the lower shelf of my grow space underneath artificial lights, which I have not been using often this year, simply because of what's going on with the increase in prices for utilities. So this orchid has not had the same amount of light I would have given it during all her previous winters with me. And it was interesting to see how the leaves are coloring back to green, whereas the more tender new leaves on the top are still holding on to the anthocyanin. This is her position when she comes outside. It's my south facing patio, where as you can see, she will get full sun on a sunny day. And if the day is a little bit overcast, I still have her here because of the white reflection of my facade. That also provides a lot of, lot of light. I am pleased to say that for the time being, I'm quite comfortable with the conditions that she's had to endure, seeing as she would prefer temperatures of around 20 degrees Celsius and higher. She has endured temperatures of 15 degrees in my grow space when it was the coldest during the night. So I have picked away all the media around her stem to avoid any kind of rot. My media is a mixture of ceramis and lava rock. Ceramis being the main ingredient, and then I've just top dressed with lava rock to keep the stem a little bit drier. I am very concerned with these cold temperatures that that stem is going to rot because that is precisely why I lost my first Renanthera monachica. It was stem rot. So despite being quite woody and sturdy in structure, I find that this orchid needs a little bit more air around the stem. And for that reason, I've left a hollow around it now just so that it gets a lot of air. Thank goodness today we have a bit of a weather reprieve and I can keep her outside so that she at least enjoys some sun and some fresh air to keep that stem frying out. Now, happy days, I am seeing a new root growing and I am so hoping that that root will just go straight into the pot and not become one of those aerial roots that become difficult to maintain and keep growing. It's not a must that it goes into the pot because I have some very, very old roots from back in the day from its first season with me and they have woven themselves 
down into the media, out of the pot and into the tray, which I normally have filled with water. The water level today is a little bit higher because today I took advantage and put some fertilizer into that tray, being very, very conservative with 100 parts per million. Even though we've had very overcast cold days in the past where I've only maintained the water level, just barely touching the media and only using plain RO water, this orchid needs to have some fertilizer to encourage that root to grow. It also needs a little bit of fertilizer to help it through a little bit of a stressful time. And even though the next two weeks are going to be another real test of endurance for this orchid, as the temperatures are gonna drop exponentially, which is rare for this time of year, the hormones are already starting to respond to the longer day lengths. And I would like to help that along a little bit. This orchid is such a slow grower, I am not concerned by the fact that it's gonna bolt and start to grow any kind of lanky growths. And that is where the balance comes in, that right now I'm working with the hormones, I'm putting in a very small amount of fertilizer, anticipating its slow growth that in two weeks when our temperatures are then supposed to get back to normal, at least this orchid has had the sustenance building up to the warmer temperatures to then find itself in its temperature comfort zone and respond grow accordingly. That is the plan. So as I mentioned at the beginning, being in Southern Spain, winter, it doesn't always give me an advantage. When it comes to low temperatures, I start to tiptoe around just getting my orchids through the stressful times. I have been watching a leaf that has some glistening on it, some sticky substance. I cannot identify that as happy sap. It is possible that it is happy sap, but I'm very concerned about scale. So I've been keeping an eye on that, but I haven't seen any scale on this orchid, which is a good thing because once again, stem rot and the Mona Chica, um, yeah, they don't do well. And it is very, very difficult to bring a stem rot affected Renanthera Mona Chica through and make her survive. Before I bring her indoors, I will be emptying that water tray out if nothing has evaporated to just leaving the base of the tray damp. You're probably wondering why I haven't cleaned that tray out. Well, the last time I took the base of the orchid top off, I saw root tips coming through the drain holes underneath that orchid top. And for that reason, I'm not twisting that saucer off to clean it. Once the warmer temperatures come, I'm just gonna clean and rinse that saucer out a little bit with a jet stream of plain RO water. But as that causes a lot of splash, I'm not doing it this time of year. She is still alive. That is very important to me. I am looking forward to eventually getting blooms on her, which if all goes well, should happen around June. I hope that you enjoyed this quick update on my Renanthera Mona Chica. Talking through the trials and tribulations of making sure that this orchid comes through safely is giving me the hibby-jibbies. I have two more weeks to go if the forecast is to be believed. And I can tell you the accumulation of gray hair is not just because of my age. This winter has been a test of faith and survival of the fittest in my collection. Hopefully in a couple of months, all of this is just distant memory and the orchid will forget any trauma she may have suffered throughout the past months. <laughs> I know that I won't forget this winter, not one bit. <laughs> anyway, thank you so very, very much for watching. I wish you a beautiful, beautiful day on one condition though. Please stay safe. I would love to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.